Welcome everyone, this is Dr. Shira Jaitley, cardiologist from New York, your cardiologist on your favorite website, moneymeterhealth.com, which is your website on social media, showing why video channels, uh, the Cardio 360 video series, which I'm uh, developing, uh, primarily to educate all the medical fraternity and as well as the general masses. As I always say, the clinical outcomes only get better when the patient education is combined with medical education. And that is my uh, forte has been around all through my 35 years of my practice. So without any further ado, I once again welcome you on moneymeterhealth.com, your favorite website, which is dedicated to teaching and educating one and all. So without any further ado, the subject of the matter today is... Uh, what is sustained VT? Now, we understand various uh, arrhythmias, obviously, but sustained VT is where you may have a polymorphic mechanism or you may have a monomorphic mechanism. A polymorphic will look like the following, and uh, I'll tell you that in a second. Now, polymorphic will have more like, if you will, torsad pattern so you know torsad whenever you say torsad that's a very dangerous term and torsad de point that means it's rotating on its own like a spindle if you will so it gets narrower and then you know more wider and then narrower and then more wider whereas a monomorphic will always have a pattern like this which is something like you know in a more sp spring like fashion where it's like uniform in both its axes as well as its in dimensions and the um, the various amplitudes. Now, polymorphic is more dangerous. Remember that this is very, very prognostically bad. Monomorphic is also bad because it's sustained VT anyway, but monomorphic is relatively not as bad as polymorphic. Just remember that. So that's one, one important distinction. Sustained ventricular tachycardia normally is uh, defined when you have a heart rate of more than 100 per minute and then of course you have the duration is should be at least over 30 seconds unless requiring a um, you know a cardioversion uh, for hemodynamic reasons etc so just remember that sustained VT by definition should have a heart rate of more than 100 and again we know that there are slow VTs that that are really compatible with life for a while at least till the patients really present to the emergency room or bring bring the medical attention to emergency but uh, duration has to be more than 30 seconds unless a hemodynamic instability persists and then somebody's already shocked, quote unquote, by then and therefore it still is a sustained VT by definition. Now, having defined this, now let's understand, obviously you'll have structural heart disease. The etiology could be the following. Uh, structural heart disease is one of the things. And then you have a non-structural heart disease where there is no, you know, uh, structural, and but then you have a heart disease because you have a sustained VT in these patients. So structural heart disease, especially the ischemic heart disease that stands out rather very, very prominently and that has a scar tissue from an MI or it may have an, um, if you will, a viability uh, pattern uh, of uh, a region which could be uh, considered as a viable tissue but it certainly is highly prone for uh, sustained VT and that uh, can perpetuate and we'll uh, define that in a second. Now, non-structural, obviously, where you're not able to define any whatsoever cardiomyopathic uh, condition, but yet you have a sustained uh, VT in these patients. So just, remind, just be mindful that structural and non-structural, obviously, uh, both are very, very prognostically bad, and both can be treated by an ICD placement, if you will, and uh, very seldom an EP study is required unless an ICD is really getting refractory and when it gets refractory, that means there are too many shocks happening or patient is presenting with num numerous VTs and yet the ICD is not able to uh, produce or generate or identify the. So remember, the ICD has to identify the shock before it actually delivers it. So there are numerous places where ICDs can still be failure, but 90 to 95% they are most, most likely, they are very successful. So it's only a small group of patients, 5% of the patients, even after ICD will continue to have a refractory VT, and those patients will require a radiofrequency ablation. So again, our ICD placement is one of the choices of treatment here, but then, uh, as I said, radiofrequency ablation in those handful of patients who are still refracted to ICD treatments, those will fall into that category. Now, let's understand how it works. Now, here's your heart, my favorite schematic, I always come to it. And then you have your left ventricle here. 
So left ventricle say we are going to show some scar. Uh, well, we're going to show some scar tissue first and say there's a scar here and in the lateral and the apical view, if you will, or the apical walls. And yet you have some bit of, um, say, uh, viability in between. Now, this becomes a very good nidus for a re-entry mechanism for a VT. Remember that. For a VT, it has to be a re-entry mechanism. It can be an atomicity as well, like somewhere it may just start automatically like this. Or sometimes it could be a re-entry, as I said, and then um, inherent to, uh, um, um, say, vulnerability because of high susceptible sensitive uh, myocardial tissue. But the VTs in general, they are re-entry VTs. And because they are re-entry VTs, they must include a portion of viable tissue here and a portion of scar tissue here. So now what happens is when the impulse arrives at the viable uh, area, it can perpetuate and then it slows down here, right here by the by the level of the scar tissue and then again perpetuates, accelerates again. So the re-entry mechanism requires an establishment of at least a scar and a viable area. That's the, at least the hypothesis of the thinking for now. And therefore, sometimes this could be all ablated. You could do an ablation here with an RFA, radio frequency. And many a times it may require still an ICD placement as well. So ICD placement is usually the first choice and then that fails, then you go to the radio frequency. Now, um, let's understand what is uh, idiopathic. Uh, now, there's another type of uh, that uh, sustained uh, that occurs is the idiopathic VT. Now, that has two varieties. One, which is uh, associated with an RV, ARVD, and as we call it, arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia. Now, that requires a diagnosis by an MRI because you must demonstrate that there's a fibro fatty tissue here which is existing as well and those fibro fatty tissues now they will be present here and as a result all of this will be seen in the free wall of the RV and that free wall RV is only diagnosed by an MRI. Now, I mean you could see it on an echo but the free wall RV is not clearly seen so well in the, R in the, in the echo setting so but again the diagnosis is really by an MRI if you were to ask on the boards arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia, specifically in younger 18, 20, 22 year old young individuals who manifest with uh, idiopathic VT will manifest in that fashion. Now remember that this is more of a right ventricular, obviously it's a right ventricular RVOT type of uh, VT. Now the classic example on an ECG a diagnostic feature will be here is you'll have a tall R wave. These are tall R's in two, three and AVF and you will have a left bundle pattern, uh, left bundle pattern in these patients uh, with, uh, uh, so you have a left bundle pattern because it's arising from the right ventricle side and then you have tall R's in, uh, in the inferior lead. So these are some of your criteria. My screen disappears, but then it comes right back as I pull it up here. So this is the beauty about my uh, app where I can go back and forth into my own slide. Now, so, so ECG will be a diagnostic feature where it'll define the R waves, which are tall in 2-3 AVF, and then you have a left bundle pattern in these patients, with, especially in V1 and V2. So that's your left bundle bat, uh, branch pattern uh, in the RVOT. So again, looking at the EKG, you can't tell whether it's arising from the ARVD or it's idiopathic. But remember, all we can tell is arising from the right ventricle. And thereby, one can ascertain that, look, now we need to send this patient for an MRI. At that point, you confirm whether you have an ARVD. And then, obviously, an ICD placement is the, is the procedure of choice. For ARVD, remember that ICD is the procedure again of choice. But for idiopathic, Radio frequency ablation is excellent, by the way, because remember that this is where your uh, pulmonary artery is arising and uh, the pulmonary valve is sitting right here and the RVOT is here. So now if you were to magnify, let's magnify that for a second here. This becomes your uh, RV. Here is your pulmonary artery. The pulmonary valve is here. This is your PA, pulmonary artery, and this is your RV. And your RVOT is here. So RVOT is here. Now remember the, uh, the ventricular tachycardia, which is the re-entry ve ventricular tachycardia is occurring in this fashion here. 
Remember that. It's occurring in this fashion. So the, the RVOT right below the pulmonary valve is the idiopathic variety of um, ventricular tachycardia that is originating from the RVOT. And that is the thing which is requiring an ablation. And RFA works wonderful in these patients. Why? Because it's very easily amenable from the right side. You can go there and ablate it. But it's automatically mapped for you anyway. So this is, uh, this is in a nutshell how you manage uh, sustained VTs and how do you diagnose and what the types are. Presence of uh, polymorphic, monomorphic must be analyzed. Uh, structural and non-structural heart disease must be seen. Find out if they're originating from the right side of the ventricle, especially looking at the EKG. Always have these options available like an ICD and a radiofrequency ablation, but ICD is mostly required now. Very rarely an EP study is done. RFA is only offered to patients specifically for uh, arrhythmogenic uh, right ventricular dysplasia and or uh, RVOT, uh, idiopathic variety of uh, um, sustained VTs. Um, again, once again, you may use some antiarrhythmic agents like beta blockers and calcium blockers, but then uh, that is only indicated while you're uh, awaiting these various procedures. Uh, once again, I, I know for sure, for lack of time, I have to cut short quickly now, and this was a nutshell and sustained VT on your favorite uh, website, moneymeterhealth.com, and uh, where education is freely available to all, and, my, and thank you for fostering my, my spread of information to all. I thank you again. This is Dr. Sharad Jaitley from New York. So long until the next